Hello, all. This is Dr. Dave Maslach talking about reciprocity.com. The E is spelt with a three. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I'm building a sharing economy proofreading platform where I believe you should be able to get all of the feedback. It is a peer feedback platform that allows you to get the skills and de uh, development and wonder that you need to become a prolific scholar and writer. In this particular video, I really want to talk about threats to internal validity, in particular, the sort of historical chance threats to internal validity. This is part of my Nerd Out Wednesday series where I talk about things that I think are really interesting every Wednesday in science and stuff that I find interesting at this moment. So I'm putting out all this kind of stuff. And right now I'm talking all about internal validity and different sources and different threats of internal validity have gone through many of them in the past you can look at some of them like things like regression to the mean for example and instrumentation and all these kind of things that you might hear about as potential threats to internal validity they're pretty useful videos i think because they also get into and what i like to do is also get into you know how you can actually solve or mitigate some of these problems along the way and just from my personal experiences of dealing with these particular issues so what i'm going to do is define what is internal validity in this particular video get into the historical chance uh, events is a uh, threat to internal validity and then get into you know possible ways to sort of mitigate this particular issue and as well as if you do have that problem and people are sort of pointing that out reviewers are pointing that out what you can do with dealing with that particular problem so what is internal validity and now again this is a recap it's essentially where you have a design a you have a research design and you're trying to link the research design and the hypothesized effect to the result that you see and the closer that this result the hypothesized effect is to the result that you see the more internal validity that you actually have and the farther it is and the less internal validity that you have because essentially what you're observing is some sort of correlational effect at that point and you can't rule out the possibility that there are some other threats to internal validity and one of the really important threats to internal validity is sort of historical chance events this is essentially where there is some sort of randomness or weird events that happens at the exact same time as the study that you're performing say you perform a lab study for example in the lab study that um, in that particular day that the temperature outside all of a sudden fluctuated quite dramatically, the barometric pre pressure changed very dramatically, and you only ran that study the one time, well, you don't know if it was the study, the results of the chemistry study that you have is the results of the change in the barometric pressure and the temperature outside versus what you are doing within the lab. Now, this also happens within the social scientists. Again, I'm a social scientist, in a business school I study this kind of stuff and this might be where you send out a survey to different managers for example and the survey goes out to different managers and you only have this at one period of time you get the survey results back and then you don't know whether that there's some sort of weird thing that's happening at the same time that you have uh, sent out that survey that could affect some historical thing that changed the sort of results that you have um, and affected that rather the sort of the results that you or the the experimental design that you have or the survey design that you have what was actually driving the effects so there could be all sorts of weird randomness that happens at any given time in the environment it's not necessarily some sort of weird dramatic event but it could be something really minor at the same time right so maybe that there was a news report that came out that disturbed a series of managers at the exact same time and then they all responded when they got that survey maybe very negatively maybe very positively you don't know what's really going on behind the scenes but that that is a chance that actually happens so if you sent out a survey only once and you get the response back well then you do have a possible chance a historical threat to internal validity with the design that you have even if it's a sort of simple design that you've created right it could be caused from that sort of randomness that happens in the environment now how do you actually mitigate these particular problems when they do occur well um, or before they occur again the the best thing that you could possibly do is get multiple so you send um, multiple surveys for example over a series of time getting multiple observations over a series of time for the same manager you can also get um, 
You can also get multiple managers in many different locations under many different con conditions, and that's going to reduce your sort of threat to internal validity the more sort of wider conditions that you're attacking. Generally, the timing effect is going to be a lot more important, but you also want to sort of look at different conditions as well so that there's not sort of weird historical things that are happening. So if you're doing a survey within a particular industry, or let's say you're only doing a laboratory study at one particular time, Time in one particular lab, you might want to replicate that across a different lab. And maybe if it's simple enough, you can actually replicate that particular result in a different lab under different conditions, maybe in a different environment. You know, there's all sorts of cases where that is the case. So for example, when you're cooking, for example, which is cooking is just basically chemistry, right? You're baking, it's just basically chemistry. You can get different results. You can cook something at, um, you know, one city. And if you go to another city, maybe it's higher up up an elevation that has different moisture in the air, you're going to get different results in under those different conditions. And you just want to rule that out as much as possible by doing that by having, you know, different observations of the same thing in different conditions, um, not only sort of in different different conditions, but as well over time, that really does help out. Now, what happens if you actually do have a threat to internal validity, a historical threat to internal validity, and your reviewers or whoever you're sort of communicating with is making sort of pointing out this thing. Well, there's sort of two ways that you can take this, right? The first way is you can take this as an obvious ob um, advantage to what you're doing with your historical study. Now, this is going to, keep in mind, this is going to result in you actually putting in a lot more work as well as putting in a substantial, much more writing and thinking as well. So the advantage way to think about this is that, well, there's some weird thing that happened, right? So maybe you sent out a survey on September 10th, 2001, to managers, and they had the results and you know, some sort of results that came back. Well, you know, a couple of days later, you're going to get probably far different results after September, uh, um, you know, September 11th, 2001, because of all because of the the World Trade Center results, right? So we viewed the world completely differently. Well, you can have viewed that as sort of a problem and whatnot, but you can also view it as like, wow, this is an amazing opportunity to understand the world and how they're under how people understand risk what that's going to happen and you have to be very upfront with a your reviewers um, and in your paper as well when you're writing your paper you have to be very upfront that this actually happened so that um, people are very aware that you know that this is this is kind of um, hypothesizing after the um, after the results are known and that's essentially what um, a lot of this stuff kind of ends up happening and it's a lot more on the qualitative side but as long as you make that really well known and you make it well known to both your reviewers and as well as the you know in your paper that that's how the results were were developed maybe it's in a post hoc analysis for example where you actually add things and develop things or it's a, a second third fourth study under different conditions well that can be really really interesting results right so you know the first study is you send out the survey before September 11th, um, you know, September 10th, for example, 2001, then you send out another survey that's a month later after the fact, after those particular results happen, and then you send out another one to see maybe a year later to see what the results are of the particular study that you have. So you can see that you can develop a really nice story. It's going to change the theorizing substantially in your paper. And that's why it's kind of um, hypothesizing after the results are known, as long as you're clear that this is kind of more exploratory and that the other studies maybe are, um, you know, different results and whatnot. If you're doing that sort of design, then you have to be just very clear that you're doing that and be very clear in what actually happened during the study. I have seen papers doing done that have done this and they've been very, very successful and had a major impact in, um, in, in our field, for example in my field. One of them um, was about a strike that happened. They were doing, this particular researcher was doing a study on hospitals, six different hospitals, and then halfway through, there was a major strike that happened. Well, you could have thrown out the entire data set and all of the data that you collected and all that effort that went through, or you could take advantage of that and say, wow, this is a perfect opportunity to understand how there's this sort of strike event happened. 
and that could be really useful. Now the other thing that you could do, and it's the it's probably not what I'd recommend given you know something like that happening or some sort of really um, interesting event that happens. But you know if it's sort of a minor thing that happens or minor events that happen, you can maybe do the second thing, and that is just acknowledging that that is a you know, that's a problem with your study and put that as a limitation in your study. Now, depending on how severe that is and the sort of difficulty that people are going to have with that particular problem, um, well, that could be, you know, that could be a deal breaker sometimes for a paper, or it could just simply be, you know, if it's, if it's a relatively minor thing, then it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Now, what you can do in that circumstance is a limitation. You can send out another survey, exact same survey, or, you know, do that study again to a replication of that study under similar conditions in a different um, environment, for example, maybe in a different laboratory environment, right? By simply just replicating, that could really add a lot of robustness to your results and, you know, really navigate this sort of historical um, threat to internal validity problem. Now, um, once you, and, and, and you might think it's gonna be a lot more work and it's more, much more difficult to do that kind of stuff, but once you've already sort of developed the methodology and you developed all the instruments and things like that, it's much more easier to replicate things into different results because you have all of this extra learning and how to actually do that along the way. So if you like these videos, I do put out videos every Wednesday that really are hard geared towards the science nerds and researchers that are out there. I also put out stuff that help out uh, graduate students that come out every Friday. And if you're interested in innovation and strategy, strategy and stuff like that. You can check out the other videos I put out on Thursdays and Saturdays and uh, occasionally on other days. I put out stuff on writing on Mondays if you're interested in how to become more productive with your writing. You can also check out Reciprocity, the E is spelled with a three. So I'm trying to create a platform that's um, going to help behavioral science in a number of different ways. You can look at some of my older videos and how I was, I'm planning on doing that. So thank you so much. Appreciate everything. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.